I'm going to share the desktop uh, where uh, I'm going to work, and we will do some uh, a practical session uh, about installing a uh, full system. So, <clears throat> actually, uh, I've written uh, I've written a blog post about uh, the uh, the work that I'm going to do in this uh, workshop. And uh, before we start, uh, let's have a look at the at the FUS architecture or the FUS net network architecture. So uh, this is the, the server, uh, the FUS server. It is connected via gateway to the internet. And also uh, it is connected to a switch uh, and to LAN 1 uh, and in this LAN, we have FUS clients, uh, printers, etc. Uh, it can also be connected optionally to another, uh, to a second LAN, which, it, it, which is called LAN2 in this, uh, in this uh, diagram. And in this LAN, we have some access points and uh, people can access with uh, mobile or tablets or uh, with laptop with a Wi-Fi connection. So uh, all the co configurations are actually on the server. And also uh, all the authentication for the clients is done centrally on, on, the, on the first server. And all the clients uh, have uh, accounts, uh, central accounts on the first server. So suppose that a student uh, is using this, uh, this computer one day, uh, he is going to log in with his own username and password. The authentication is done on the server and he will access his own uh, his uh, home directory. Another day he may use this other client and it, he can use the same username and password. And again, uh, he will be able to, uh, to connect because the authentication is done centrally on the server and he will access his own uh, his, uh, home directory. So uh, this gives flexibility about uh, uh, how it is, how the system uh, is used. So so here are the instructions that we are going to follow. Uh, let me show also the terminal. I'm going to use LXD for uh, virtualization and I'm going to build uh, virtual machines with, LX, uh, with LXD. Uh, I find it more uh, suitable than other alternatives and more user-friendly, especially because it is uh, completely a command line. You can do everything from the command line, no graphical interface. And uh, if uh, we look at the networks, Uh, I've created already a uh, network called LAN1 and uh, another network called LAN2 that we are going to use for this, uh, for this demonstration. And the connection to the internet is this one. And the uh, full server will connect to, to this, which is the internet connection, and to, to these two uh, LANs. So uh, le let's create Uh, let's create a virtual machine for the server. I, I, I'm going to use this command, lxc init full server empty because uh, there is nothing installed in it. And then uh, this option shows that it is a virtual machine. And then uh, it, it, it will be connected to this network, which uh, goes to the internet. And the, this size is going to be 100 megabytes and also, also some other uh, configuration options, four gigabyte RAM and two uh, CPUs. And then later I am going to attach this server to the network uh, LAN1. Uh, and also I'm going to attach it to the network uh, LAN2. So uh, let me copy this command. and paste here. 
Uh, we have created a virtual machine for the server. And then uh, these two other commands. Uh, let's see the configuration of the full server. So we see that uh, it, it has a disk of 100 gigabytes and it is connected to Ethernet Zero and uh, also it has a network, uh, network in interface uh, connected to LAN 1 and another one connected to LAN 2. Uh, right now it is uh, stopped, it is not running. We, we, we need also to install uh, the operating system in it. The operating system is Debian uh, 12. So we will start from Debian 12, uh, a standard Debian 12 installation, and then we will uh, set up it as a full server. We will run the scripts that configure the full uh, server. I've already uh, downloaded the Debian uh, ISO, Debian 12 ISO, and I'm going to use uh, this, uh, this one to do the installation. But first I, I have to attach uh, this Debian ISO to, so I, I can uh, down, download it with uh, this command. But um, I, I have to attach it as a device to the server with this command. And I will, uh, this boot priority equal one uh, will make it uh, uh, start booting from the ISO, from the CD. So let me copy. And paste. Let's check again the device of the server. So we see that we have a CD-ROM uh, attached as well. And the uh, boot priority equal uh, one uh, will make it boot from, from the CD-ROM. And uh, now I'm going to start the server. It is booting from the installation CD. And we, we start the installation of Debian. Location Europe, and then Albania. In this case, just for testing. Uh, Locate, let it be. US and also the keyboard configuration that is good. So we are starting the installation of uh, Debian 12. Uh, this is the network that is connected to the internet. Host name, full server, okay. It's okay. Domain name, uh, I'm going to call it school.al. Root password, I'm going to use a simple password. Uh, now Debian is asking for uh, for a user. Guided use entire disk. Uh, 
let's use LVM, it is, uh, it is better. All files in one partition. Usually this, one of these two options is better, but for testing uh, we are uh, going to use all files in one partition. Continue. Yes, it's okay. Right changes to disk, yes. Let's make this full screen. No additional uh, media. Uh, configure the package manager. I know that the server is in Finland, so I'm going to use this one. Uh, no proxy, because it is directly connected to the internet. Dashamir, can I say something while it is installing? Yes, of okay. course. No, no, okay, you have some interaction now. No? I just... So, uh, we are just installing a server, a basic server. So, just uh, standard system utilities and SSH server are enough. Uh, deselect all the others. Paolo, if you, want to, if you want to add something, you can uh, intervene anytime. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to say that what uh, Dashamir is doing is really showing that uh, we did not reinvent the wheel. So, uh, we start, uh, you can simply start from a Debian uh, uh, NetInst uh, uh, image and then uh, install uh, the full server uh, packages on that. In the past, we provided uh, some uh, ISOs for the server and we decided not to do it anymore and just provide a, a, um, a cloud init image, which some technicians use. Cloud init uh, in, image can be used uh, with uh, many uh, virtualization systems, just to simplify, I mean, uh, installation and, uh, and have it ready, let's say, within, uh, within uh, minutes. Installation complete. Uh, let's continue, and it will going to reboot. Okay. Uh, before uh, restarting it, we need to remove the CD uh, device that we, we attached. So. I, I just stopped uh, the first uh, server and uh, I'm going to remove the CD. Let's check again the devices. Uh, there is no CD. Now uh, let's uh, start the server.
So you, you see that it is starting the dial. Uh, now I can log in as the root. root. And uh, before before uh, we continue, I'm going to install the LXD agent. Uh, this is related to the LXD virtualization, but it helps helps me to. Uh, to work com comfortably on, on the shell. Uh, so uh, I'm going to, to download this script. Second. Let's check the script that we downloaded. So it just installs uh, some services that uh, allow me to access uh, the shell of the server. Uh, from the host. Now, if I if I try this, uh, I can access the uh, the shell of the full server, and it, this uh, way of uh, accessing the shell is easier because I can do copy paste uh, commands on the graphical interface. Uh, it is not possible to to do copy paste. So le let me close the graphical interface. Uh, now I, I can work from here uh, on the server. And uh, now, if we check the interfaces, we'll see that uh, the interface connected to LAN one is not uh, is not configured yet. So we, we are connected to this interface, uh, to the internet, and uh, the interface that is connected to LAN 1 is not uh, configured, and also to LAN 2. But we need to configure uh, this one to set a static IP. And we are going to, add, to edit this file, and we are going to add this configuration into, into this file. So let me copy all, all this block.
So we, we did we uh, added this con this configuration. The IP address is 192.168.0.1. Uh, Now uh, we activate this interface. If up and the name of, of, of the interface. So we see that uh, now it is uh, configured with the IP that uh, we gave it. Now let's proceed with the installation of the full of the full server. First of all, we need to up, uh, append the, the configuration of uh, the uh, FUS repositories. In, in this uh, repository, there are the pa packages of the FUS project. And we also are going to use this key uh, for verifying the pack packages. But uh, also we need to add bookworm uh, backports as well. So le let's modify etc uh, apt uh, sources dot list and add these two lines. So we have. We have added these two lines. And uh, now we need to download the, uh, the full ski or full ski ring. And we can update the packages, the package list. And now we can uh, install this uh, package, FUS server, which comes from the repository of the, of the FUS project. The next thing we are going to set up uh, the configuration of the full server and then uh, use the uh, skip full, full server create to install and uh, to do additional install installation and configurations on the server. So uh, the command is full server and we can use the option help to see some of the possible options. Full server help. So uh, there is one subcommand create, uh, upgrade, purge, uh, purge, and uh, configure to configure the server. Let, let's use this configure first to create a configuration, and then we'll use uh, full server create to do additional installations and uh, setup of the server. It is going to ask some questions and it will generate a configuration file. So uh, please insert local network address. We are using uh, the local network 192.168.0.1.0.0 uh, slash uh, 24. Please insert domain name. Let's say it is uh, school.al. <coughs> the Windows will group for this network. School. 
insert DHCP server range 192.168.0.10. So this is an example, and I'm following this one, but I'm replacing with my network 192.168.0.10. Insert master password. This master password uh, is used in several uh, applications, for example, for accessing the LDAP uh, directory. So I'm going to use a simple password so that I don't forget it. And locality, let, let's say Tirana. The one one interface. Let's check it here. So we are using this this interface. Oh, I made a mistake. The one interface is this one. Uh, the the one interface is this one. Uh, I'm going to correct it later. And uh, now the configuration is located, that is generated, is located at foodserver.yaml. Uh, so, uh, external interface uh, is wrong, it is uh, this one. So, local net, domain, uh, work group, DHCP range, etc. I'm, I'm using a simple password for the master password. And now uh, I can start the installation and configuration of the full server with the command full server cre uh, create. This is running some uh, Ansible scripts. And uh, these Ansible scripts install uh, additional software and uh, uh, servers or services uh, that uh, perform the, common, the functionality of the, of the first server. Some, some, of the first, uh, some of the services that are, are installed on the uh, full server are, for example, DCP, of course, for providing IP to the local networks, uh, uh, NFS for sharing the, the home directory with uh, the clients, um, Squid for uh, HTTP proxy, and you can use uh, Squid or HTTP proxy also to block uh, accessing certain networks or to allow only certain networks that are, for example, uh, useful for the educational process. Uh, you can block, for example, Facebook or other uh, websites that are not, uh, uh, should, not, should, not should not be used in the, in the school environment. Uh, what, are the, what other services? Uh, it installs also Clonzilla. Clonzilla is a, a very, very useful uh, server which can be used to copy the image of a client on the server, and then uh, you you can duplicate this image to other computers on the LAN. Uh, what, what other services are, are installed? Can, uh, this? Yes, if you okay. want, I can I can add some more. Then there is uh, the LDAP uh, server, which is a slap uh, slap D. Then uh, there is uh, Kerberos because we introduced uh, some years ago also Kerberos for authentication. So mm -hmm. it's called the KRDB5 and uh, some other services that uh, FUS introduced in order to let the server and uh, clients communicate, which are called uh, the Octofus daemon and Octofus client, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, as Quidi already said, uh, okay, content filtering E2 Guardian, which can be disabled if uh, uh, there are firewalls that already implement uh, filtering uh, uh, in the school. 
and uh, I don't remember if you said uh, already samba. Then no, uh, I didn't say. There is uh, um, uh, caps. There is caps also for uh, uh, caps is for printers. For, for printers, okay. And uh, we we added uh, a package which is called uh, um, uh, Fus Backup, which uh, uses uh, uh, a very well known uh, uh, backup uh, uh, system based, of course, on uh, on uh, on free software. And uh, what else? Uh, maybe a free radius if mm -hmm. one wants to install a, a Wi-Fi. So by means of a third. Uh, network uh, interface which has to be added uh, to the server and uh, apache apache 2 which is uh, also needed for for some services and more or less i think that's it okay thank you Paolo. you're welcome So after uh, this uh, command is finished, uh, we are done with the installation and configuration of the server, and we will start with installing a first client. Uh, so the first uh, client, we are going to install it manually, and we will start with uh, a standard uh, Debian installation of Debian 12 XFCE uh, desktop. And then on top of that, we will uh, use some Ansible scripts to uh, set up uh, it as a, as a full client. Uh, but uh, for the other clients in the network, we can use Clonezilla. We can copy the image of the first client that we installed on, on the server using Clonezilla. And uh, then from Clonezilla, it can be installed automatically to all the uh, clients in the, in the lab, for example, or in the school. So uh, this part is about downloading uh, the ISO of the Debian uh, Live uh, Debian 12 XFCE. I've already downloaded uh, this ISO, and we are going to use uh, the image that I've downloaded previously. And uh, then we will create a virtual machine. Uh, we will create a virtual machine uh, which is connected to to LAN one. So. Uh, network LAN 1 means that it is connected, it has a network interface that is connected to uh, the virtual LAN, LAN 1. So let me copy this command for uh, creating this client. And also I'm using uh, this size of uh, 40 gigabytes, which should be uh, enough uh, for testing. And uh, around 2 gigabytes, 1 gigabyte could be uh, enough as well, but it's better to, to have to two gigabytes because it works faster. With one gigabyte, uh, in my experience, XFC is a bit sl slow. Uh, so let, let me copy this command. And uh, let's check whether server installation is, is finished. It is not finished yet, but uh, we, can, we can continue with uh, installing, with creating a virtual machine. So I'm creating uh, client, it is empty, uh, which means that it does not have uh, any system installed. Uh, the option VM uh, tells that it is a virtual machine because LXD, LXC can uh, handle uh, containers as well, but we are creating a virtual machine. And uh, the other options, uh, LXC, I guess, we have created a client one. And we are again going to attach a CD-ROM uh, device, uh, which is the Debian ISO that we have downloaded. And it will make it bootable from this uh, CD-ROM device. Uh, let, let's uh, also we set security uh, secure boot false so that it, it can boot from uh, the CD-ROM device. And let's check it, its configuration.
So we, we have a network interface, we have a disk of 40 gigabytes, we have also a CD-ROM and it is bootable, it is booting from the CD-ROM right now. Uh, and uh, this CD-ROM is uh, attached to this, uh, to, to this ESO. So the ESO is this one here that I've, uh, I've downloaded previously. And also this other command uh, shows the configuration in uh, more details about the configuration. Uh, this, the first one shows only the configuration of the devices. Uh, the, the second command shows uh, uh, other configurations as well. So we see that it, it is an AMD64 uh, architecture. It has uh, two CPUs, two gigabyte RAM, uh, and other options. We see also the hardware, the the MAC address of the network interface, and also the the list of devices here. We have created the the virtual machine, but it is not running running yet. It is stopped. Uh, we are waiting for the configura configuration of the full server to finish and we will start uh, installing the, the client. Actually, we can start installing it uh, in parallel because uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. They, they don't uh, conflict with each other. And uh, to, to start the install installation, we run this command, LXC start uh, client plan and uh, attach console uh, of type uh, VGA, graphical console, using. So again, we are we are starting uh, from the CD, but instead of instead of leave system, uh, we are selecting start installer. We are going to install from the, this CD. English. Ah, country, other. Europe. And then Albania. Configuration, okay. Locally, it's okay. Uh, keyboard, American English, is okay. Host name, let's call it client one. Domain name, the same as the server. Good password. I'm using a simple one so that I don't forget it. Uh, full name of new user. One. Username, username, password for the new user. Uh, use entire disk. Uh, I'm not using LBM for testing, just uh, use entire disk. All files in one partition. Probably one of these two options is better, but for testing, I'm using the first one. All files in one partition. Finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Yes. Write changes to disk. Yes. Okay. While it is installing, can I say just something, Dashomir? Sorry? Hey, while it is installing, can I say just something, Dashomir, about the clients? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, um, 
within uh, in images we typically put the uh, root partition as the last one in a way that uh, whenever we need to increase uh, the the size of the disk uh, it is quite uh, easier to be done okay thank you okay thanks uh -huh. So we see that the installation of the Ansible scripts on the server is finished. Uh, there, are, there are no errors, so everything seems to be uh, okay. Uh, now we are working uh, to, to install the first client. Uh, let me open it again. This one is going to take longer than the server because it installs adi additional software as well, uh, besides the basic uh, Linux uh, tools. It is going to install XFC desktop, which uh, contains uh, other packages. Configure the package manager, use the network mirror, uh, yes. Let's select the first one is okay. Now it is asking for, for an HTTP proxy and uh, we are uh, going to give here uh, the, the proxy configuration like this. Uh, this is uh, this client is located on the LAN. It is behind the FUS server, and uh, it does not have access, uh, direct access to the network. It has access through the FUS server and, and then to the internet. But the FUS server uh, has installed a proxy and does not allow allow uh, HTTP connections. Uh, uh, so. Uh, direct HTTP connections. So we have to use this uh, proxy in order to access uh, the packages that we need to download. Well, it's time to use this one. Let me show you. Continue without uh, network mirror. Okay, let's continue without the mirror. Okay. Installation is complete, so this time uh, this was very fast. So we are going to remove the CD from uh, this virtual machine uh, and then we will start it again. So there is no CD right now. Let's start playing one again. Okay, now I can log in as a root using the root password that I uh, used during the installation. Let me get a terminal. And uh, now I'm going to install the 
uh, uh, LXD agent again, so that uh, I can uh, access the shell easily and uh, can work with copy paste commands. Uh, here I cannot do copy paste because this is, this is a graphical interface, the graphical interface of the of the virtual machine. So uh, let me let me copy the file from the root uh, from the, from the server. Copy it here. Yes. Root password. Let me run this. Okay. Uh, let's see whether it worked or not. Okay, uh, I'm on the shell of the of the client one. Uh, now we are going to install the the Fus client uh, package. So there is a package that is called Fus client, and we will install it from the Fus repository. So uh, I'm going to add this these two lines on uh, the configuration file of the uh, of the packages. So we need to uh, to get the the key of the full repository as well. We use wget to get it. So we did this, uh, and also the, there is a warning uh, somehow, and we can avoid it with uh, this configuration. And then we just install a uh, first client. And then uh, let's check the package for server. Post client, sorry. And let's install it. And, uh, I found that these two packages are required as well for some reason. Uh, Otherwise, something stops uh, at some place. And uh, now uh, we should have this command fuss client. And uh, it has several options, uh, but uh, basically it can be used uh, to, 
to set up uh, the client, uh, it will call Ansible uh, scripts to, to set up the client. It has several options. Uh, one of the options is uh, to, to tell the command to, to which group of uh, computers uh, this client uh, belongs to. Or uh, another option is uh, to set uh, the host name. Uh, and another option is to make a light installation, not to install everything. And we are going to use this one for the demo because uh, this takes uh, a shorter uh, time. But uh, before before continuing with uh, uh, with the installation of the first first client, uh, I'm going to make a a, a snapshot uh, of the client at this moment of the virtual machine because uh, we ne later need to create. Uh, we need to create a Clonzilla image, and the Clonzilla image needs to be created before running the first client uh, command. Uh, we will do it later, but uh, let's uh, let's create a snapshot of the virtual machine right now, and later we will come back to this one to use it for the uh, Clonzilla image. And let's see, stop uh, client one. Let's see. Snapshot client one snap zero. Let's see. Info. Client one. Uh, we have a snapshot here. Uh, now let's start it again. Let's see. This, uh, client one. We will get a shell inside it, and uh, now we will uh, continue with uh, the client configuration. But uh, as we saw from the command uh, first client help, from the help of the first client, it, uh, it it is going to ask for a group of computers or for a cluster of compu computers to which this client uh, needs to be uh, attached or needs to be added. And we can manage the clusters of the computer uh, computer clusters using uh, using Octonet, and uh, we can access Octonet from a browser with uh, this address HTTP proxy. Proxy is uh, the address of the server uh, with this port. So let, let's start the graphical interface. Let's uh, uh, let's access the graphical interface of this server and. Uh, and create create a computer cluster from the Octonet. So I can access it here with LXC console, console client one, type VGA. I can log in as root for the time being. And uh, I can open the browser. And here use that as HTTP proxy. 8080. No, uh, sorry, this is the uh, 13402. And we are accessing the Octonet uh, interface. Uh, here I'm using the username root, but this is another uh, root. Uh, this is not the root of uh, of the server, and uh, so here at the uh, of And so, as the password, I'm going to use uh, the master password that was uh, requested during the 
during the configuration of the server. So this is the master password. This is not the root password of the server. Login. And, uh, so here we go at managed host. There is a menu here. Uh, create new cluster. Cluster name. Let's say it is uh, lab one. Create. Uh, let's create another one. Lab two. Create. And here we see the two clusters that we created. All computers, there is no computer that is uh, registered uh, with the server yet, but uh, we are going to register the uh, client one soon. So, yes. okay. We are at the client uh, prompt. At the, at the client shell, and after after creating this cluster, we can uh, we we can run this command: full client a, and I will explain the options. So this a is add means add. Uh, this uh, g is the group or the cluster to which uh, this client should be added. Uh, this H is not necessary in this case because the host name is uh, the right one, but uh, this is going to set the host name of the client. And uh, this, this light means make a light installation. Don't install everything possible uh, because it will take uh, a, long, a long time. And uh, it is going to ask about the root password on the server several times. And then uh, it is going to run some uh, Ansible scripts that will install additional things and will uh, set up the configuration of the client properly. And uh, I also need to, uh, to run this command to fix the resolution for the virtual machine because I have some uh, problems. Uh, let, let's try to, to add uh, a user account just just in case. So it is done at user and groups. Uh, user and groups uh, create user username. User one, uh, let's call it user zero one, uh, primary group, let's say studenti, uh, full name, user zero one, and then the password. Save. So we have hit uh, this user, uh, all users, another another new user. Uh, let's see how to to make an, uh, a clonezilla image. Uh, first, uh, I will I will stop client one. And then uh, I will go back to snap uh, to snapshot snap zero. I will go back to this uh, snapshot because uh, this is uh, where uh, we did not start yet installing the uh, the first client uh, scripts. And let's see restore uh, client one. Zero. 
Let, let's start uh, client one again. No, actually, uh, we should start client one, but uh, from uh, the network interface. So, and uh, to start it from uh, start client one, uh, no, LSC start uh, client one. Console VGA, and I'm going to press Escape as soon as uh, the graphical interface is active in order to access the BIOS of the of the virtual machine. And uh, from the BIOS, uh, I'm going to boot from the network interface. And I'm going to do a manual Clownzilla. Uh, it is asking for the password, it is uh, false. It is booting a system from the network, uh, which is the system that contains the Clownzilla program. Yes. Huh? Uh, and it is asking for the Clonzilla password. Uh, actually, I, I have to set the Clonzilla password uh, to make sure because I, I'm not sure what is the Clonzilla password. Let me set it on the first door, please. So, password Clonzilla. Clonzilla password, start, device, beginner, uh, save disk. It will save the whole disk of uh, the client. And the name of the image, this is okay. Okay. Enter, enter. C, non guitar, uh, Shelly, okay. So mostly it was uh, the default choice for all the steps. Yes. And now it is making a copy of all the partitions uh, and also the boot partition of the of the client and saving it as an image on the on the server, on the full server. It is not going to take too long, just about two or three minutes. You here you you saw the. Uh, the, the, that the interface of Clonzilla was set to Italian, of course, it can set to any other uh, language. But uh, once you, uh, you learn how to navigate, it is very easy. Uh, first time that I tried it, uh, I was a little bit confused, but uh, once I learned how it works, uh, it was just mostly selecting the default options. So it, it is not so difficult. Once you do it, uh, uh, if you do it one time, then the next time it is uh, you can do it with, yeah, with closed sure. eyes. Just press enter and uh, it works correctly. 
uh, I meant, uh, I mean, for for the with the idea of internationalizing FUS, uh, I mean, uh, um, the 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 Kronzilla, which uh, is running uh, and which is downloaded from the server, we we had. Um, 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 pre-configured it with the with the Italian language, and uh, of course, as I said, I mean it can be it can be uh, reset. Uh, uh, for example, in a configuration that we could add uh, to the server while configuring it uh, to set the language standard that will be used uh, for for the school. Uh, sorry, pardon. So it, it is almost done. Here now it's doing a verification. Yeah, okay, yes. So I can, uh, I can just uh, power off or reboot the, the client. Uh, I'm, I'm rebooting it. Okay. And uh, now we are on the full server, uh, the place where the, the things related to Clonzilla uh, are stored is the directory uh, server, uh, Clonzilla. Uh, let's go to this directory. So, uh, this directory is created, uh, uh, contains the image of the client that we just stored, and it was just created. Uh, this is also the time, of the creation time. Oops. And, uh, it contains some things inside. We don't need to know, to know what the, these things are. But uh, now let's uh, uh, let's create a new virtual machine and try to install it, starting from this uh, from, from this image that we store. So I'm going to, to create a new virtual machine uh, with almost the same uh, parameters as the first one. And set secure boot uh, to false. So, uh, secure boot is false. Uh, let's check the configuration of this. Uh, let, let's start this second one, this uh, second machine. Let's see, start client two. Uh, console VGA and I will press escape as soon as it starts uh, so that I uh, can access the uh, BIOS of, uh, of the virtual machine. Okay, and now uh, we can boot from, uh, from the network interface. We will select the automatic Clonzilla uh, this time. The password is the same. And it is uh, asking a few questions uh, for the new uh, client that is going to be installed. 
So the, the host name for this client is uh, uh, client two, client two, and the, the image that we are going to use uh, there is one only one image actually. So this is the one. Join the client uh, to the full domain. Yes, uh, the cluster for this PC it is uh, the cluster lab one that we created uh, before. Okay, this is for confirmation. These are okay. Start cloning. So, uh, installing a, uh, a client from the Clonezilla image is much faster than uh, installing the standard Debian 12 XFCE and then doing some other things manually, etc. Uh, this is uh, completely automatic and it is also also faster. And uh, it sim simplifies a lot uh, the management of uh, one uh, cluster of com computers because you just boot it and then uh, press F12 or whatever to access uh, the BIOS and then boot from the network uh, card and then uh, everything else is automatic. You, you just leave it to run until it is finished. And this is what we are going to do. Uh, in this case, we, we are just uh, uh, let it run until it is finished. So this way, uh, in schools, we can typically um, install uh, 10 uh, machines at a time. Okay. Of course, then there is uh, a limit depending on the TFTP server in uh, downloading the Conzilla image uh, and then later the, the image uh, of, uh, of uh, the FUS image. And we also experimented in doing uh, uh, broadcasting with Conzilla. So you leave the clients which are waiting uh, for a signal from the server and then the server starts broadcasting the image to all the machines. And uh, this of course speeds up things uh, uh, a lot, uh, but you in any case need to, to take uh, uh, a glance at the machines while the process is, uh, is executing. So after the image uh, uh, cloning is done, uh, it reboots automatically and after rebooting, uh, let's check uh, console. After rebooting, it runs some scripts from uh, Clonezilla, and these scripts uh, kind of personalize this uh, this client. Set the host name, uh, and also they, they start uh, installing the uh, the Ansible scripts that will install additional packages that are related to this client. And meanwhile, this is going to take some time actually because there are lots of uh, software that is going to be installed. But meanwhile, let, let us check what is uh, what has happened on, on the server. So we are at the directory uh, server Clonezilla. Uh, there is a file here, computerlist.txt. Uh, if we look at the content of, of this file, we will see this line, uh, client2, the MAC address, and uh, the name of the image, and uh, join uh, this cluster. Uh, these are the data that we gave uh, manually when we when we installed the second client from uh, Clonezilla, but it, it, uh, they are stored on this file, they are saved on this file. And if we ever need to install again the same uh, computer, uh, then uh, it is not going to ask again for this data because uh, it will take them automatically from, uh, from this uh, file, from computer list. So the installation of the, uh, of the client continues and uh, as I said, it actually takes uh, some time. So uh, may maybe we can close here the workshop. Uh, what do you think, Paolo? 
Yes, sure, of course. It would take so much time because uh, now it's going to install all the educational packages. I think you explained everything uh, with, uh, I mean, really in detail. And thanks so much, Dashamir, for the great work you've done yeah. to show how to install a server and uh, uh, clients. Okay. Uh, you can, you can see that uh, there is a, a documentation that you wrote, uh, which is online. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, it, it is, uh, uh, let, let me show you, dashhaja.fs.al, let, let me paste uh, the link on the chat, actually. Uh, thank you everybody for participating. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, workshop and uh, you learned something.